Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel. So my name is Emily, and this is my channel, Books for Life. I'm sorry if it's windy. Okay, I just like hiked all the way up this hill so that I could do my June wrap up part two, like someplace not in my dorm room. Cause if I haven't posted my vlog yet, which I'm not sure what I'm going to post first, my school wants me to teach AP language and composition next year. So they sent me to Connecticut for training. So I am here, I'm in Connecticut and it's really pretty. Like this campus is gorgeous. This is a high school and I'm here. It's pretty, it's gorgeous out. So I'm like, oh, I'll do my wrap up outside. There was no wind down below the hill, but there's wind up here. So I apologize about the wind, but I will try to keep this quick, which I haven't already because it's been a minute and I'm still talking. So let's get into it. So this is my June wrap up. I already have part one. So in this part of the wrap up, I'm going to start with The Handmaid's Tale. This is the other book that I told you I would read for the month of June. I read this with like the movement from April's channel, Getting Higgy With It. I'll leave a link to her channel down below. And she like spurred people to read it in response to like the recent legislation that was passed in Alabama. So here's my thoughts. It is a scary, unlikable world that Margaret Atwood created. The characters are not likable. The world is not likable. The plot sucks. So there is nothing enjoyable about this story, yet it is a good story, which just, just like blows my mind that I liked this book, even though everything in it sucks. So I think that is a testament to Margaret Atwood and I think people definitely need to read it, but it was not enjoyable. It was good, not enjoyable. Definitely a distinction there. I can't remember if I gave it four or five stars. I don't think I gave it five, but I think I definitely gave, I think I gave it four on Goodreads. I wish I cared more about the main female character. I just, I felt like I struggled to connect with her and I think you're supposed to like she's not a likable character and I think you're supposed to struggle but because I did I didn't give it a five maybe I should give it a four and a half it was a really good book I could like if you're gonna twist my arm I could give it a five like I could give it a four I could give it a five like that's the kind of book it is second book I read King of Scars by Lee Bardugo and no this is not the book that was in the giveaway I actually have two copies of that but um yeah so this is my copy and okay first off if you're going to read this you need to remember the Grisha verse I read the Grisha verse a few years ago and I don't remember anything from the Grisha verse and so that made this really hard I really struggled because I didn't remember this I didn't remember th key events. I had to go and like basically read a chapter by chapter summary of the last book in the Grisha verse. So that brought it down a lot. Aside from that, this actual book felt like two completely different stories. Okay, so, and it was like, so part of this book is in Nikolai's perspective and the other part of this is in Nina's perspective. And then a few pieces of this is in Zoya's perspective, but primarily you transition from Nikolai to Nina, Nikolai to Nina, Zoya, Nikolai, Nina, Nikolai, Nina, you know what I mean? So. There are a few chapters in Zoya's perspective. Nikolai and Nina are like completely different parts of this world. It was so hard to become invested because as soon as you became invested in what was happening and the characters and their feelings, it switched. And then you were back in Nina or then you were back with Nikolai and you're like, no, I just like got into this. Why are you moving me? In Six of Crows, when she switched perspectives, it was fine because you were still at the same event. Now you were just in Inej's perspective instead of Kaz's, but it was fine because you're still like seeing the same events whereas Nina and Nikolai are completely different stories I understand that they will connect in the next book but they're not connected right now so you would get into an intense scene with Nikolai and or Nina and then you would like be like oh my god I want to know and then you'd have to stop go to Nina and then get into an intense scene stop and then go back also I felt like this opening chapter was fucking amazing. I loved this opening chapter. That had me hooked. And then it went downhill. 
and then I got really, really bored. So I was so excited reading the first chapter and then I was bored. So I think I ultimately gave this like three and a half stars. It was a good book on its own. There were some things I didn't see coming. I liked some of the twists. Mina is amazing and I love her character. There was one scene with the good mother. That's all I'm going to tell you. One scene with the good mother that I loved. <laughs> I buddy read this with Amanda from the Curly Reader. I'll leave a link to her channel down below. Absolutely check her out. She's wonderful. I love her channel. Uh, she's so sweet. And so we were talking about this and I was just like, oh my gosh, Nina is my idol. I love Nina. I can't believe like what she, like, oh, I just loved it. It was so great. So it is a duology and because it's a duology, I will read the next one. I have to be honest, if this was a trilogy, I don't know that I would be invested enough to keep reading, but that's my thoughts. It was a good story. You need to know the Grishaverse and <laughs> I got a little bored. Okay, this is taking me way longer than I thought it would. And I have to go to happy hour because at, conf at this conference, they give us cocktails at happy hour. And after a day <laughs> of training in that classroom, I need some drinks. So next book, uh, was Language of Thorns, also by Lee Bardugo, five out of five. This was awesome. So this is a series of short stories and they are creepy short stories. They're fairy tale esque So they have like all those things that you know and love about fairy tales, but they're dark and they are twisted. And let me show you just like how beautiful. I know I've already showed you this book before, but like, look at it, like builds on each other. And you can, I'm sorry about the wind. You can see so much beautiful highly recommend reading this if you enjoy fairy tales like dark twisted fairy tales i love so definitely check this out then i read where the crawdads sing actually i listened to this on audio by delilah owens i believe this is one of the reese witherspoon sunshine club books five out of five loved this story it was beautiful the main character you just Oh, you just felt for I loved it it was amazing I loved the characters five out of five if you enjoy adult fiction historical fiction definitely check this out so this is about a girl is basically left on her own when she's seven years old her mother abandons her all of her siblings end up leaving because her mom was like the glue that held the family together and then her father disappears and so she's seven years old and she's growing up in the marsh on her own really great story tragic childhood beautifully written uh, it says a lot about ignorance and prejudice and things like that. Like, and yes, there is racial prejudice, but there's also just like prejudice against anyone who is different because our main character is different than everybody else. She is not accepted in the world. Oh, otherwise it also like follows two timelines. So you're like following our main character and I can't think of her name, which is why I keep referring to her the main character, but you follow her as she's like growing up in the marsh and then it like flashes forward. So it's like 1950, she's growing up in the marsh and then like 1969, there was a murder that happened. And then you go like back and forth, back and forth between the two timelines, really good absolutely beautiful highly recommend five out of five next i listened to a long way down by jason reynolds this was another five out of five read um this is all about our cycle of violence in our world specifically in urban areas and specifically with within like the black community so you're following this boy and i can't think of his name because apparently i can't think of any names but anyway his brother was just shot and so the code is you don't cry about it you don't rat somebody out but you seek revenge so the next morning he grabs his brother's gun and he hops in the elevator and he's going to go kill the person he thinks killed his brother and then shit happens on the elevator it is written in verse and actually the audiobook is what I, I listened to it and Jason Reynolds uh, is the narrator for the audiobook and he does a fantastic job and it's less it's less than two hours so it's a really really quick audiobook but in less than two hours he has fully fleshed out characters and I wanted more I was like no you can't end this way like I needed to know more and I think that says a lot about a book that's less than two hours long so excellent story five out of five highly recommend I want to buy a copy for my classroom library I think it would be a really powerful text to have in my classroom and it is just beautifully written like Jason Reynolds has such an amazing way with words we read his um commencement speech and I can't remember to what college if you look up Jason Reynolds commencement speech it will pop right up in Google um, but he gave a commencement speech a couple years ago and we analyzed his use of rhetoric within that speech itself like he is just such a brilliant 
writer and it comes through here it comes through in all of his books really much but like really it was beautiful and a long way down he's excellent last book i'm supposed to talk to you about the witcher I was supposed to finish as the second prequel in the Witcher series, Sword of Destiny. I have a, have 100 pages left. My brother came up to me and my brother was like, hey, I finished the first Witcher book. He's like, do you have the next one? And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm not done with it. And I was like, but I'm going away for a week. Do you want to take it? So my brother took it. He's um, currently reading it. When I get back after my week away, I'll grab it back from him and then I will finish it. When I filmed my first wrap up, that was like only like June, 20th or something so I thought I'd have enough time to finish it but I didn't and I'm so sorry but I will finish it and get that in I'll talk about that at the end of July I just can't believe how long it's taking me to get through it it's really good still like I'm still enjoying it but I'm not enjoying it quite as much as the first one and I think there were some translation problems that problems but like issues it doesn't translate completely perfectly and that left me confused at sometimes and they're longer stories not shorter ones so I just it's just taking me a while to get through it's still really good and I know I'll still give it a really high rating and I that and I definitely still want to continue on the series but it's just taking me a lot longer to get through it so this is my wrap up I hope this wasn't too windy so this is my part two wrap up if you didn't watch my first one please go check it out and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do I will be back with a bookish video soon as always keep reading